Located on Milwaukee Avenue, the Niles Design District is a home improvement destination for consumers, designers, and contractors. For those looking to renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, expand with a new addition, or enhance their curb appeal, the Niles Design District in Niles, Illinois offers everything in one convenient location. It's your road to a better home. Here I come to save the day. Welcome to Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we're back again one more time. And uh, I think today... Check out this shop. Where'd you find this place, Rich? This is nice. I, it's a beautiful shop. Isn't it? I, it's, it is. It's is that a, a football, football game going on right above our head right here? What is that? <laughs> no. That's no? Just a, no? Just the oh. window in the gable end for ventilation. Oh, that's the trees through there. That's what, I, I need to put my glasses yeah. on so I can see what's going on. This yes. is cool. Uh, I want to say thanks to the Niles Design District for uh, helping sponsor the, the, the shows that we do every week and uh, go to the NilesDesignDistrict.com for more information and check them out. they got a lot of great stuff uh, to work on your home. And what's our topic today, Rich? We're going to talk about fixing wood, damaged wood. What? I'm sorry? Damaged wood. Blue pills? Is that where you're handing out blue pills? Is that damaged wood? No, 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 not that kind of damage. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. No, so different different levels of distress. So... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, when it when it happened, I'm I know, sure you're so pretty distressed it. about it. Yes. <laughs> Here oh. we go, right out of the box, brother. <laughs> right out of it. That's right. So let's start with just as like impact damage, right? Somebody dropped something on there. You know, your your Bud Light fell on the floor. And- oh yeah, that looks like a beer can. Boom, right on there. Yes, it does, doesn't it? So you know, something like that, you can't fill those. We're just going to go real fast into all of these things. You're yeah. you can't fill that. No. But what you can do is if you put a little bit of water on that and a, and a damp rag mm-hmm. and an iron, you can actually, the, the wood fibers will suck up that moisture, expand, and that dent will rise out of there. Uh, if there's finish damage, it won't necessarily fix the finish. You might have to refinish it. But right. you can get that dent out. And it won't happen in one try. You might have to add a little water, heat it, and do it maybe 10, you know, 10 times over 10 minutes. But you sure. can get that dent out that easy. Yeah, over time you just keep uh, keep treating it, and uh, and 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 it will it will start to pull it out, and it depends, I think, also on the thickness of the finish on that floor too. Um, that, that, yeah, because I mean, the moisture got to those... penetrate through there. Yeah, if it's a UV finished polyurethane floor, it may not you know it may not come get back through too there. well. But if it's you know an oil finished top, French polish, something like that, it'll come right out. Right, which good furniture. Right, and if you've got a waxed floor, be careful because it'll all turn white. Right. <laughs> You'd be re- re-waxing your floor. So. Right. So what we really want to talk about is like gouges and scrapes, uh, water and dry rot, and, you know, yep. we want to go, you know, and then insects. So here's a great example of rot. You know, and we're talking about patching something. We're not talking about repairing your deck with, you know, with some kind of filler because the whole deck's rotted away. We're talking about the corner of a door, a small area. Um, so something like that where you've got the rot there, we want to make sure that we can fill that and make that go away. And, and you know, we don't have to go buy a new door right away. Exactly. It'll, it'll, it'll buy you some time. So Right. Um, and don't do it while the door's hanging. Take the door down. It's a <laughs> lot it, easier. <laughs> put it on the workbench or uh, on, on some saw horses and get it cleaned up, sand it, refinish it. And oh, then make then sure I gotta re- Then i got to realign it if I take it off. No, oh, the no. pins go right Pull in. the hinge pins. <laughs> No, and then the other thing is, once you're done, make sure you prime and paint the very bottom of the door. You need to do all sides of the door, just not the parts you see. So yeah, that's do a key. all sides, the front and the back. Hey, <laughs> is that a woodpecker? No, that's actually a carpenter bee. Oh, a carpenter bee. Okay. So, you know, the other type of wood damage we typically run into is going to be insectual. You know, so you've got <laughs> bees, ants, termites. 
I did not say ancestral. I said insexual. <laughs> I know exactly yeah, what you said. You're all giddy tonight. <laughs> it's, it's Sonar's fault. He's the one that got me going. I'm blaming him. <laughs> all right. Well, just, just saying, man. We're just talking about wood here. Of course. Of course. We're just talking about holes in wood. That's it. That's all That's we're it. doing. Uh, too funny. So regardless of what caused the hole in your wood, you know, whatever caused the damage, uh -huh. um, you want to address that first. Okay. So in this case, you might need to call an exterminator. Because mm -hmm. I will tell you, if you've got carpenter bees or if you see bees going into anywhere in your house, don't caulk it. No, oh, no. Because they'll yeah. come through the drywall or the plaster. They'll come through the yes. other side. And, and then now, and you're, now they're in the house. Yes, and I've seen that with the whole beehive. So, mm -hmm. yes, call an exterminator. They do their puffy powder. And actually, a better idea is if you think they're honeybees, call a bee wrangler. Yep. So hopefully they can get the queen, and then they can move the whole hive. Yes. Because, you know, for whatever reason, they're all dying off. And once they do, we do. Right. So not a good thing. Um, yeah. And, I mean, if the wood is rotted, then, you know, you got to stop the moisture, right? You've got recurring moisture issues. So you want to stop that. Um, and then just gouges and scrapes. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. You know, if it's just get pads for your furniture. Right. You know, because most of the time it's feet for the furniture and or it's the toys the kids are playing with. Mm hmm. Yep. That'll all have a factor in it also. Mm hmm. So, but anyway, so pretty easy steps, though, to, to repairing the wood. So that's the first thing you want to do is make sure you get all, you know, get rid of whatever caused it. Right. Correct. The second thing you're going to want to do is fill the area with the appropriate filler. And we'll discuss that in just a minute. And then fill that area, let it sand it up that's smooth. And as you said already, paint it, finish it. Yes. And, and once it's finished, it'll hold up again, right? Fresh Correct. coat of paint will keep it from getting wet and rotting some more. So I'm going to guess you don't just take the caulk tube and just start pumping caulk into there. No, no, no. no. The exterminators <laughs> have a powder that they blow in there. And yeah. It, gets rid of it then you have no issues right once you have no issues then you can fill the hole right and it's, actually if you've got a bee that does that good of a job then you might be able to just use a plug right yeah, a you piece of dowel you might not have, yeah a piece of dowel you may not even have to mix filler for that one right so it's pretty simple so let's talk about different types of filler though oh so, good filler good filler i so love these just, guys yeah so i believe they came out of tinley park i don't know if they're still there Mm -hmm. um, which was my hometown. Um, we had him on the show years ago. Yep. He was kind enough to send us some samples and we're not paid by him. Nope. Uh, you know, we're not, he's not endorsing our show, vice versa, but I use this stuff everywhere. <laughs> it's a water-based wood filler and yes. it does not shrink yes. and it's easily sanded. And if it gets a little old, you add water and remix it. So the stuff is great. However, it will freeze, but it's the best wood filler I've ever used. Yeah. I, and really stable. Sand's really nice uh, yes. for moldings and stuff like outside. You're doing some moldings or you got a crown or something you're trying to fill in. Does a great job of patching that stuff back in. Exactly. So that's for small cracks. That's, you know, miters. That's for nail holes. Uh, you know, you're not, you're not going to fix the bottom of that door with it. Correct. It's too it's not designed for that. It's not designed to go in there and a big old plug. Um, so another one for small scrapes and nicks, you, you just might want to be able to use a pencils or a touch up sticks. Right. So these are actually furniture repair sticks, um, typically used with a oil based finish or an oil finished top because they're actually wax. And the real trick with them is to heat them up and blend them in. So they're blend uh, sticks. Yeah. So you use a little iron or uh, a, a soldering iron works really well. Because you can just kind of get just what you need where you need it. And or you a can heat blend gun. two or three sticks to get your colors and your streaking correct. Oh, yeah. Have you tried a heat gun to do that, yeah, too? that'll okay. work. But, it, again, it's, it depends on how big of an area you're trying to do. I mean, obviously, it. if, it's, if it's real large, you want to, you may have to refinish the whole piece. But those typically will work really well. And then the, the other one, if you've got, like, the bottom of that door, which is what most people are running into, is that, you know, you have a steel door or a steel skin door, mm -hmm. the edges of it are wood. Right. And the, the leading edge or the hinge side will tend to start rotting out at the bottom, and you need some filler. Right. So the best way to do that is to basically get some wood filler. Usually it's a two-part system. Mm -hmm. and. It's two-part for the filler, but it is a two-step. So what's there, that wood hardener, 
that is basically a resin that you pour into the wood or you know paint onto the wood right it soaks into the fibers and then it hardens so right now you've actually got rid of the fungus you've stabilized the area that around where you want to patch and then you can go ahead and put the filler in there the one thing i'm going to try with those being down here in fla is um i'm going to see if it makes my uh sand dollars less breakable <laughs> So, well, it, I don't, you know, it looks like just lacquer is what it looks like to me, uh, or it's thin down lacquer. Um, is what it smells like to you? Yeah. Yeah. But it does say it's a resin. So, I mean, obviously right. lacquer is not a resin, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. It does have some odoriferous to it. Right. So, but once, and it, it really absorbs into the wood. You, you can put a lot on there and it just drinks it up. But mm -hmm. once it's done and it sets up and it goes pretty fast, it, it gets hard. And it's, you've got something stable then to actually bondo. You know, with, exactly. With and that's the step. point. If you're trying to put a wood filler in there and this is the Minwax wood filler and that's a two part. So that's right. It's basically it's Bondo for wood. Right. Um, everybody's used plastic filler before. I'm pretty for sure that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Never really read the chemistry on it, but I've done enough body work, you know, when yep. I open that up, it's just like Bondo. <laughs> yep. It's but you mix the, the, the filler and then the hardener, you mix the two together. Not that hardener. It's a little tube of hardener. Right. You know, it's the little high performance, the little one. Right. You mix that, put it together, and you smear it into the holes. That's a technical term now. Yes, yeah, uh, smear. Sonar, did you hear that? Mm, smear. Yeah, smear. That, mm -hmm. That's smear. a technical term. Gotcha. Um, and the one thing I will tell you is that does not sand as easy. <laughs> no. So there's two, two tips I would give you is make sure you don't put enough in. In other words, go a little lighter. Don't make a big ball of it and then figure you'll sand it down because you'll spend three days sanding it down you have to chisel it down at that point. <laughs> pretty much yeah the other trick is if you have a cheese grater now cheese grater is kind of a term we, in the body shop industry it's actually a serrated edge um looks like a cheese grater mm -hmm. but before that hardens completely while it's soft you can actually grate it down and that'll get it closer to your finish then you can sand the difference still takes practice so again it's easier to add another coat than the sand one off. So just take it nice and easy. So go shallow and then do a final coat. Yeah, I'd rather put two coats on there in an hour than spend two and a half hours trying to sand it flush. Got it. You know, especially on a wood door because the wood's going to be the softer side. Mm -hmm. So you'll end up doing more damage to the existing area than you are to the new area. So. Yeah, and you got to go back to the store for Minwax elbow grease. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Yeah, and there's other brands out there, but Minwax obviously is available at all the box stores and Ace, sure. and you know, so yeah, it's, it's it's the most it's popular kind of a one out there. Product, so yep. I have no problem with it. Um, anyway, so that all seems like a lot of work, but um, if you if the trim or the pieces are beyond repair, then I suggest you just start with something that doesn't rot, and that's PVC trim. So you Correct. get PVC trim, or they call it cellular PVC. There's a slight difference in the two, but that picture there, that would be, and it comes under many different manufacturers. I think most popular is probably Azek. Um, and it looks like what Ron has right there on the workbench. Yeah, right. or, yep, right there. Good job. Yeah, that, and that over it. Flip that. Right. Uh, there, see? Now, we just store this stuff outside, too. It just leans up against the building, and we've got all different kinds. What I like about this is, um, I think it's, this might be trim tech, but... Uh, this is a half by six piece. You, it comes in all the standard trim sizes that you would have, uh, five quarter, three quarter. Um, you got the half inch products here. You can get it in four by eight sheets. Um, mm -hmm. So if, when you're doing stuff, it also is a lot easier to bend. And we just finished uh, making some corbels on a job. And that's what we did is we molded the whole thing together to match the old system that we took down. And it's a uh, it's it's an amazing product and it's done. I mean, you're technically you don't even need to paint it, but you know if you want to match your colors, then you go ahead and paint it too, and it's right. done. It's just it's a excellent system. We don't use wood anymore. Yeah, it, the the manufacturers actually down here anyway. They tell us that we should be painting it, so most of our product comes primed. Okay, and we do paint it then, but it does hold paint well. Yes, it's also machinable. In other words, I can run it through a table saw. Run it through the table I saw, run a router. With, I can hit it with a router. Yep. You know, it's going to hold an edge. So that's really the difference between your higher end product, uh, Azec, Trim Techs, and all those. Mm -hmm. You can get some lower end ones. We'll call those cellular PVC. And the reason you call it that is if just look at the end of the board 
And if it's full of lots of little holes, uh -huh. then that's a cellular PVC. It's not going to give you as nice a finish if you machine it as the other pure solid PVC stuff. Got it. It's also pretty stable. It's uh, dimensionally through freeze thaw cycles. It does not expand and contract as much as even pine. Right. And the other the nice thing about this too, they have glues and, uh, and, and caulk. So if you want to make a 30 foot long board, you can, you can miter it all up, glue it all down, clamp it. And now you've got a 30 foot board if you want, and it's all one piece. So you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about seams opening up over time either. So, um, right. it, it's, uh, it's really a very interesting product. So, yeah, I hope that, I hope this video helps you fix a couple of dings, yeah. scrapes, holes. Uh, or if you got to replace it, there's a good way to go. And of course, they make deck boards the same way. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. So it, there's a bunch of different manufacturers out there that are making the uh, composite decks too. So that's Absolutely. pretty cool. All right. Are we uh, ready to wrap this up? I am. All right. Well, well wait. Cool. Don't we, we got a thing. We got a thing. We, we made a promise last, oh, last episode. That's right. We completely forgot about the bags, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, made the guy sit through that. Yeah, I was sit through the whole thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Whoever whoever's gonna win this, I'm sorry. You know, that we had to sit through this whole thing just to find out right. who wins the tool bag. Then and which yeah. which one was it? Uh, was it was it this was this the tool yeah, bag we were yeah, using? It was the Mar Mariano's one, right? Mariano's, yeah, yeah. The, this is the tool no, bag. No, no, that's not the tool bag we no? were giving away. No. <laughs> <laughs> This tool bag, that's the one you're talking yeah, that about. One. That's the tool bag we were giving away. Yeah, see right that's there. The that's uh, the bag. crescent backpack. Um, and it, it had the trunk too. It's a backpack with the trunk in it. So on the, even on the back side here, there's a there's an extra. Can you get is he is he going for the over the head shot? I'm trying. He's there going he's going for the overhead <laughs> shot. Here we go. There it look is. at that. See look, you got an there inside pack. Look at that. Ooh. All right here. Uh, provided by Crescent. Well, I say thanks to Crescent for providing this backpack. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot of cool stuff. So if you weren't uh, tuning in last week and found out about this, we said to uh, send us a picture of your... Um, of your current status of your yeah, tool box. We, we, and we were going to pick the worst bag, one. whatever. Yes. <laughs> so we got a few here that we want to kind of run through. Uh, there's not all of the ones we got, but the major ones we got anyway. So, uh, and then we're going to have the winner on the last one here. So go ahead there, Sonar, start running these down. Yeah, milk crates or bucket that? boss? Yeah, yeah, it's a milk crate with a bucket. It looks like a sump pump in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's they put a sump box. pump just... in. <laughs> just a backup. A backup for a backup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Some rope. I don't know. Who knows what the hell they're doing there? <laughs> yeah, that's not a tool bag. That don't No. Qualify. There's a box. That's your toolbox. No, oh, man. <laughs> What's know. in there? A hydrant? I have no... Uh, or, or I don't know. What is that? Maybe a torch? Can of tomato soup? Pork and beans? Oh, big red can. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. There, flip that one. It was a trash can. Yeah, just a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count, man. No trash cans. <laughs> no, now, yeah, people are just sending us pictures of junk right. in their shop. Right. These, these are the tools I didn't want anymore. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Oh, that's that's a go. nice toolbox there, man. That, that's not bad. We need to rotate that one, too. Yeah, let me turn it one. Clockwise. There you go. You need to rotate the previous one, too, if you can. Yeah, let me go. Well, good thing about doing that. There we are. Oh, look at that. Oh, revert, it changed them all. <laughs> cool. Okay, so what do you got next? See, that's that's yeah, a no. good that's a good looking toolbox that right is. there. I think that's even yeah, a that craftsman, is. isn't it? Yeah, that looks like a craftsman there. That's a good solid toolbox. I think that one. He's he's not a winner. Oh, oh there it is. What There's is that an oldie. One? Yeah, that's a good looking bag. That's still a good looking box. It's it's serviceable well, still. It, especially since you can't buy those anymore. Yeah. yeah. You can't buy a good steel box anymore. No. Is that that's the one that, that comes out from the side too. That that piece right, right off yeah, the face. The, yeah. And it says craftsman on the bottom and you notice it got that kind of crown look to it. So that's yep. an oldie. Oh, yeah. That's yep. a good box there. No, that's just a bucket. That doesn't no. <laughs> Come on. That looks like a solo cup. Just... 
That's like not cool. Got a side job. You know what I mean? You're just grabbing yeah. the five tools you know you're going to need. You throw them in the five gallon pail and run up the stairs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not what, a toolbox. That's no. That's not cool. We're not. We're not buying that one either. Hey, what you got in your pockets? Like. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that no. Roll that okay, one. Okay, let's roll them over. I remember this one. This guy made this thing. This was he made this in his shop class. In his shop class, yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool, but I think and I still, he still think, has it. Yeah, and it and it seems to be quite serviceable yet. Damn. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another one. Oh yeah, we had these. This is this is a Navy standard right here. Is what is that? That's this is, that's this your is basic go bag. This is the bag, right? yeah. That's your go bag, yeah. <laughs> that's your basic go bag there. That's where you're, yeah, that's those, where you're, are, those are great. That looks pretty new. That's where you got your cash, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, change the clothes in there. Just well, that case. one actually looks like it needs more tools. Yeah. There's all the pouches on the outside are empty. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know where to keep all my body parts until, <laughs> until they finally got this bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, roll, roll that. You got to rotate what that one again. This? Okay, this one goes. Easy. I think this this is the last one, right? I think so. Yeah, this, so I think th this I think this guy is the winner here. I feel yeah, sorry for him more than anything. Oh my goodness. Well, cuz in all honesty in his email he says he keeps grabbing boxes from the recycle bin at the grocery Costco. store at yeah. Age, yeah. Costco, and he keeps dumping <laughs> his tools in there. And that they hold up somewhat well, but I don't know if I'm buying it or not, Rich, really. I mean, come on. Did he just have a couple know. boxes sitting around the house and he threw some tools in them real quick? Or do you think he actually does it? <laughs> I don't know. It's not what he said in his email. He no, said he it does doesn't. It, so. No, I, I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna buy it. To so. be fair, this, right. that's pretty organized box, though. Yeah, that's 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 pretty, what worries me. Pretty good. Yeah, and see if you look in the other one right here, those are all his electrical testing tools that are okay. all in there. That's all that's in there. Ooh. And then these are all your hand tools, which would fit very nicely in this new crescent. Yeah. Backpack. Right, and then and all the, the electrical <laughs> stuff could go in the trunk. Oh, yeah, all the electrical stuff goes in the trunk. There you go. Your backpack trunk. Back in here, so you got plenty of nice big pockets in there. Can you see? get a shot of that? Oh, yeah, let's get that. Look at that. Let's see, look that at shot. that. Yep. Nice big pockets in here for all the electrical testing tools yep. right in here. So you got plenty of room in the trunk. All right, I say go with that. Yeah, I'll we're, we're going to give... Like I said, anybody watching this may not totally understand, but the email... <laughs> Um, I truly believe this guy actually does work out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> he must be an electrician. Some of the emails weren't so uh, legit. But that no, one yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> he does. There you go. So you're going to have to edit all that in there now? Yeah. Are you, you going to make yeah. that? You're going to have to make that one work? I'll make that clean. All know. right. All right. So with that, I think we just, right now, we should just sign off and say <laughs> thanks to uh, the Nile Design uh, District. And uh, yep. keep it square and level. Until next time. There you oh, go. There it is. <laughs> Located on Milwaukee Avenue, the Niles Design District is a home improvement destination for consumers, designers, and contractors. For those looking to renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, expand with a new addition, or enhance their curb appeal, Niles Design District in Niles, Illinois offers everything in one convenient location. It's your road to a better home.